Hey, I'm Dave. Welcome to my shop. Today in Dave's Garage, we're going to take a real deal PDP-11. We're going to get Unix up and running on it. We're going to install an Ethernet card, get it connected to the internet, and make it live on the web. Well, not with the web, just the internet, because the web doesn't exist in the PDP-11 timeframe yet. Either way, by now, from the last few episodes, you should get the sense that I've got a thing for the PDP-11, and that would be true, even though it's a fairly obscure well, not an obscure machine, but it's weird to have one of your own at home because it was kind of an industrial mini computer back in the day for colleges, engineering places, university labs, that kind of thing. And I have four of them now. So, well, three plus one where the CPU is emulated, but it's the real control panel from 1170. So let's take a quick tour of the machines here in the shop. And the first one is a PDP 1134 from 1976. This one's rocking 256K of RAM, which might seem pretty minuscule, but it was a big deal when PCs had 4K at the time. It's got a CPU that runs at probably somewhere 2 to 4 megahertz, somewhere in that range if I'm lucky. I'm not sure what the 1134 actually runs at. The 1170 was only like 5 megahertz, about the same time frame, so I assume it's slower than that. One of the first things I did when I got the machine up and running, of course, was to write a prime sieve. And because my only environment was RT11, that's the best operating system I could probably get to work in a way that I could share files easily with it on the PDP 1134. So I went with RT11 and it's got a file sharing feature where I can share features out to a host operating system so I can get access to the files, deposit my source code, compile it on the PDP 1134, or actually assemble it because it's assembly language, and then run it and debug it. No, you can't really debug it, but you can do printfs, I guess. Anyway, the 1134 is up and running nicely and it's running RT11. The next machine up is a PDP-1173, better known as a micro PDP. This is when they reduced the entire set of boards that used to comprise the CPU down to a single chip, or at least a single package. It looks like two chips on a single package. I'll show you what it looks like here. As you can see, it's a rather attractive chip, but uh, that's what's inside the machine, and that reduces much of the complexity down to this one board. So CPU and RAM, I believe, are all on the same board. You can plug in an FPU, got support for floating point, and so on. So this is from 1987-ish, according to the chips on the board. That's when most of the chips were manufactured, so it's probably an 87 or an 88 machine. They come a long way in the 12 years since 1976. This machine operates at 18 megahertz, or possibly 15, but I think this one is 18. And it's got a disc controller and a tape controller, and so on. Now the micro PDP is nice, but it's a little modern for my taste. I kind of lean towards the older iron, like the 1134. But I wanted something like 1170, but I didn't want to have a huge machine and I couldn't find an 1170 handy. So I went with 1173, which turned out to be an 1183, all in an 1123 plus box. If that sounds confusing, it kind of is because it's a Frankenstein machine. It's a BA23 housing. It's a PDP-1123 plus backplane. And then it's got an 1183 CPU card. And it's got a full 512, or maybe it's one megabyte of RAM on a second card. I've got another RAM card for it as well. And then, as we'll talk about later, it's got the Unibone. This is the machine that we'll be adding Ethernet to. Now, the other one I've got here is a real deal 1170 full panel with the key lock and all the switches and everything, and all the LEDs, of course, which is the main thing. I don't have a full 1170 to run it. So it's running against a Blinkenbone. The Blinkenbone is a BeagleBone Black Linux computer, which then runs and emulates the PDP-11 on the Linux computer, determines what all the states of the LEDs and what the input switches should be, and it exchanges that with a board that is custom designed to drive the uh, actual panel. So it runs and looks exactly like an original 1170, and it's running to 11 BSD Unix. I think there is a way with SimH to get internet up and working in the emulator, but that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to get some real hardware on the internet. Now, when you want to set up one of these antique machines, it's sort of a chicken and egg problem. You need to get an operating system on it, but how do you get an operating system on it when you don't even have a floppy drive connected to the thing? This 1173 has a tape drive, but good luck finding a tape installation of any operating system that you would like to install. So where do you start? Well, into the rescue rides, the Unibone and the Cubone. These are cards for the Unibus models of PDP and the Qbus models of PDP, respectively, that plug into the bus. They then act as if they are devices. So you can stick an SD card in with an image of an RL02 drive and tell the Unibone to emulate an RL02 drive, and it will present everything on the bus as if it is an RL02 drive, including the disk image. And so that's really the easiest way to get something on these. So I put the Qbone into the Frankenstein PDP-1183, Got everything pretty much situated, the jumper set, long story short, and base config it goes CPU, and then it goes RAM, and then the Cubone. 
and that's all that I've got in the machine for now. To get the disk image mounted, I need to SSH into the Cubone itself and run a script. In this case, I'll just run the auto start script because it's configured to look at the jumpers on the board and automatically run BSD if the jumpers are set to 4, which they are. Either way, that will run a script known as 211bsdrl0, something like that, .sh. The script will mount an RL0 image of BSD Linux and then boot it. Now, getting Unix up and running on 11.83, especially when using a Cubone, is not that difficult. After all, the Blinken Bone itself runs BSD, and it has been doing that for a year or so. So what am I working on? Well, I'm trying to get this whole thing on the internet. And so to do that, we got to configure BSD to support networking, and we need to install some kind of Ethernet card from the 80s, from before there was even probably Twisted Pair. So the first thing I did was go on eBay and find a DEC, DECNA card, or D-E-Q-N-A, which is an M7504. It's the older style of Ethernet. Now, these are all going to have like the 15 board game port controller port, which is actually, I think, AUI. But it's thick Ethernet. It's made for the coax adapters, and those somehow plug in through a transceiver, and then there's a coax jack. And I barely remember, because my first job as a college intern was to rip all that nonsense out and replace it with 10 base T. And that's what we're going to do today. So to make this work and join my homeland, I have to get the system working in 10 base T. And I've got this transceiver port in the back, and so what I need is a little box that fortunately will transmit or will transceive from AUI to 10 base T. The only decision I have to make on it is there's a little switch on the side for SQE, which is I think signal quality something. It basically verifies that the packet collision is working, and I think it fakes a packet collision periodically so you can see it. Something like that. And that switch should be on for our cases because we're actually going to Ethernet. So to get this thing on the internet, after we actually set up physically the card in the machine, we need to tweak the BSD installation to find and make use of the card. We're going to do that through the net start and the host files, which are in the ETC folder of the standard Unix installation. Now, as far as I know, there's no way to get this working in DHCP, so I gave it a static IP of 192.168.1.21. Next, we look at the net start file, and in there we configure the default gateway, the net mask, and so on, those three parameters should complete our network configuration, or at least get most of it working. Unfortunately, I then spent a week not being able to get it to work. Everything would seemingly come up, and I would have an IP address, and I could ping myself, and most stuff worked locally, but I couldn't get off the card. I couldn't get off the machine onto the LAN. In some cases, I could get an activity light on the switch, and the router at the, the Unify router would actually see that IP address, and it would register it, and I could see that it had that 21 address but I couldn't communicate with it, I couldn't ping it. And if I did a broadcast ping, if I did a ping of 192.168.1.255 from the PDP, then I would get a response from itself and I would see the ARP request go out onto the network, but nobody would pay any attention to it. And I could never figure out why. Uh, I'm not a TCP IP whiz by any stretch, so I installed Wireshark and kind of poked around for a while and I could see the ARP request going out and nobody paying any attention to them. And so it was almost like this thing was VLAN off somehow, but it wasn't. So I still, to this day, don't actually know quite what was going on. Because my next step was to get a DEC 7516 card off eBay, which is apparently the newer style of networking card and people have better luck with it. Well, long story short, I would have loved to try it, but the first one I got wouldn't power the transceiver port. So then I had to get another one. So another week goes by. So I get that one powered up nicely, and then I boot the machine, but it turns out it's not in the kernel on these machines. So you have to recompile the kernel. I have no idea how to recompile the kernel on a Unix from 1980 or wherever this is from. So I found a document enough and a little chat GPT help along the way, and I got the kernel compiled, but I couldn't get it to link. It wouldn't all fit into memory at the same time. So then I found some other documents that said, oh, restructure your make file to put these in an overlay section, and then they won't be loaded in this less necessary, and they'll take less space. And I did all that, and I still could not get it to fit. So I was kind of stuck. I could compile but not link the kernel, so I couldn't get 7516 support working. And so I went back to the 7504 and thought I'd try it again. And this time I just set everything up from scratch, and the one difference is something that I had tried along the way but didn't solve the problem, so I didn't keep, was an old Linksys 10 megabit switch. Because the port coming out of the back of this PDP-11 is going to be 10 megabits. And not every switch in the world is apparently going to be able to talk to a 10 megabit connection anymore. Turns out my Unify 10 gigabit switches simply won't talk to a 10 megabit connection at all. So I got an old Linksys, uh, you know, the perfect blue ones from 20 years ago. 
And I plug that in, it's got 10 and 100 support. And so I've got the PDP plugged into it as 10 megabit. And then I've got the 100 megabit coming out and going to the Unify switch, which will actually this way connect to the 100 megabit side and everybody's happy. And sure enough, ping in the gateway, I got a response. So now that I had basic internet connectivity working on the PDP 11 under Unix, I decided to do naturally, well, first I made sure that Telnet D and FTPD were running the FTP and Telnet demons, which they were. And then I took the IP address, forwarded the ports through the router, and posted the address on Twitter for people to try. And uh, even though the kernel is compiled for a max limit of eight, which it hit pretty much immediately, it turns out that eight people running Zork is more people than you can actually support on a PDP-11 because it kept hitting, uh, I forget what the actual message was, but when I looked it up, it was basically it can't page memory in enough for that request, and so it's failing memory allocations along the way. In other words, it was out of memory. I asked people to be nice, but... So I did bork my account, which I rapidly fixed, and then I changed the guest password so they couldn't get in. But I wasn't going to leave this thing up on Telnet forever because it's just not a secure protocol. So what I wound up doing was uh, exposing a SSH server inside of a container and then having it automatically forward on logon via Telnet. So you SSH in, and then it actually just Telnets you behind the scene. And so you've got all the secure communication channel of SSH. But at the last second here on my LAN, it talks clear text via Telnet. But that way, passwords and so on are never transmitted in the clear over any link. Now, as to what else you can do with an internet-connected PDP-11 from 20... Oh my God, how many years is it now? It's at least 40 years. Almost 50 years ago. Um, what can you do with it? Well, you can play Zork. You can run games like that. You can play Battleships, Star Trek, the old classic uh, text version of the game, and things like that. And uh, you can write a prime civ, which I also did. I did it in C, but I had to use K and RC. This is a really simple but pretty efficient prime sieve. It uses one bit per every even number, or pardon me, every odd number that you're trying to sieve out. So memory use is quite compact. And that allows it to do sieves up to 500,000, even though the page size is only 64K on the PDP-11. It takes eight minutes to solve the primes up to uh, 500,000. And how long does it take to thread ripper? 0. 0.00002 seconds. So yeah, that's where it ranks. Now, if there's more interest in the PDP-11 and Unix specifically on it, let me know in the comments what you think and what you'd like to see me try with it, and I'll give it a shot. And remember, I'm mostly in this for the subs and likes, so if you're not already subscribed, please subscribe to my channel and leave a like on the video. And if you're already subscribed, thanks for doing so. In the meantime and in between time, hope to see you next time, right here in Dave's Garage.